So I'm sure by now most of you have already heard about the uh, announcements regarding the Juno mission to Jupiter on the 4th that, that came out saying that it had finally, um, I believed, entered into the, the gravitational field of the planet Jupiter. And so the news media started releasing all sorts of different stories about it. And I gotta say, I know there's already um, plenty of videos about it and uh, debunking it. A lot of interesting ways you can come out this, but um, I find it fascinating just because it's now that I've been in this sort of new paradigm, if you will, with this new perspective on, you know, just with enclosed cosmology and space and all these ideas, it is interesting to see these new things roll out. Uh, and, and in some ways, it's not new. Obviously, it launched in 2011. Um, but, um, you know, now they're they're getting ready to, to reveal whatever they're going to reveal, you know, in the... The Juno spacecraft finally supposedly gets close enough and starts taking pictures, but then uh, apparently it's not even really there to take pictures. That has a camera on board, but it's mostly just taking all these measurements of gravitational <sighs> measures, gravity and um, radiation and uh, spectroscopy, and um, you know there's a number of different things that aren't actual digital photographs, but I'm sure they'll, they'll convert everything into a, you know, some kind of imagery or whatever, but, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of fascinating little things to kind of pick apart, but for me, it's, um, it's been weird because I've found myself kind of mostly just concentrating on, uh, the simple kind of, uh, you know, not the irony of just you know the the names of everything and how just every time it always comes you know you get into all this um this space propaganda and we can look at it on the surface as just space propaganda but then you know of course when it's the you know the planet jupiter and then the spacecraft juno um it, it always pushes you back into the, the mythological um, and just been going back and, you know, reading about Jupiter and, and mythology and Juno and how um, those were two figures who were part of the Roman, um, you know, they're both names of Roman gods, uh, obviously, and part of the, the Capitoline Triumvirate. And so, you know, there's definitely a connection between those two figures in a mythological sense and the occult sense. And I'm sure the you know, the skeptics would just say, well, obviously they they knew that Juno was going to Jupiter, so they just picked a name out of mythology that correlated to, to Jupiter. And, you know, that's the thing. There's always sort of, a, there's always those kind of surface level excuses. But to me, it's just fascinating because it's just, it continues to, to push me to wonder, like, obviously it's space propaganda and, you know, pushing the whole whole paradigm of heliocentricity and everything but it's hard to not look at this stuff more and more and just wonder wonder about what is going on on the more um, esoteric level and what are they really perhaps trying to do in terms of um, programming or you know coded coded I mean if, if this is all just fake it's more than just propaganda and it's you know we're using all these names and all these terms um, and uh, it definitely feels like there's, like there's more of a ritual to it all in terms of it's like a subconscious invocation um, or, or something. You know, all these people talking about Juno and talking about Jupiter. And, uh, you know, I've talked about this before in um, earlier videos, but just this whole idea of there being, uh, you know, that it's, everything is a code for something else. And when you think about planets, being named after um, gods or you know which are really fallen angels and um, but the idea that a planet also represents a realm of that god right and so if we're talking about spiritual realms and stuff and um, Gons of Face Like the Sun just put out a very interesting um, video on the whole Juno Jupiter thing and he talks about he even mentions about how in the Kabbalah that uh, Jupiter is one of the one of the realms it's like a realm of of hell basically so it's the you know the the, the kabbalistic system definitely kind of 
follows that idea of entities and realms and, and the planets all being sort of intertwined. But anyways, another thing that kind of popped up in this whole slew of news uh, news articles, you know, with this, this Jupiter Juno news, um, has been stuff that has come out over the, the past few years from Hubble uh, regarding Jupiter is this issue of the auroras on Jupiter that... Uh, and this is really interesting to me too, because once again, when you look into the the mythological origins of um, you know words and names and things, uh, the aurora you know aurora itself is the name of a god, the god of the dawn. Um, and so again, just like so many everything else in mythology, these are all just archetypes for Lucifer. And it's just really interesting to. To kind of um, ponder the connections between, you know, what they're they're kind of hinting at using materialistic, you know, pseudoscientific, you know, CGI garbage, but implanting all kinds of things into the the minds of the public, into our subconsciouses, um, through all this stuff, and um, it's interesting because I found this when I was looking for stuff on Jupiter and the, and the auroras and everything, I did find um, this uh, this clip from this lady just recently putting this out who, she's absolutely um, she's coming from a total new age, you know, esoteric uh, hermetic uh, angle which I would, of course, totally not agree with, but I'm just, in, would it include this just to demonstrate how people really can take all these um, you know, these heliocentric sort of, you know, NASA things being put out by, or the, you know, all these things being put out by NASA and interpret them through a, a more typical uh, Gnostic, um, you know, a very occult and, uh, you know, astrological sense. So just listen to this. our solar system become more energized and they are now seeing auroras sparking up on Jupiter's North Pole. Now I want to thank Alan for bringing my attention to this because it is very significant when we do start seeing the planets within our solar system exhibiting this type of behavior. Now the most significant comment in this article is from Jonathan Nichols who is the principal investigator of the study and he goes on to say that these auroras are very dramatic and among the most active I have ever seen. Now when we understand the esoteric knowledge and we know that Jupiter is equated to Zeus and Zeus is the symbol of our creator we know that when we are seeing this type of behavior on this planet that it is something that we should actually be paying attention to because when we apply the principles of hermetics and the principle of correspondence we know as above so below as below so above now this is basically showing us that everything in the universe is a macrocosm and a microcosm. And so we are fractals of the macrocosm within our universe. And when we see this type of activity happening on the planets within our solar system, then we can actually understand that this can be translated to the human experience. And this is where we have to look at the information left to us by the ancients because they were showing this in the symbolism. Because if we can understand that the planets, including our own planet Earth, can display these auroras and halos, then we can transfer that to the human form when we use the principle of correspondence. And this is why we do see the symbolism of the halos and auroras around the divine beings within the human species. Because at certain times of the cycle, 
when we are more energized, when the light returns, then these divine beings amongst our human species are known for who they are. They are seen for their differences between the divine and mortal humans. This is also where the symbolism of the crown actually originates because the original kings and queens were divine. And as we move down the cycle into the Iron Age, then we forget where these symbols originate and then it's only those who take power that then use these symbols to crown themselves. But when we're in a more energetic part of the cycle, then these are the natural crowns that are bestowed upon the divine by the creator because when the light returns, then the divine element within mankind is energized and revealed. And we can see this left to us in the information from the ancients. And it's also... And then of course you have the whole you know, when you're thinking about all this stuff, it, you know, thinking about propaganda and Jupiter and, and, and everything, of course, just uh, a couple of years ago, uh, the you know, most people are familiar with the movie by the Wachowski, the Wachowskis, um, <laughs> Jupiter, uh, Jupiter Ascending, which I never actually went and saw because it just looked that bad. But um, there's been stuff put out that on that as well and all the occult symbolism and the references in there. And it's pretty interesting, too. Um, you know, just kind of coincidental that that would be put out in 2015, um, in between the you know, the launch of the Juno spacecraft and supposedly a, you know this this event, and who knows if there'll be anything major coming out of it. But it does seem to further tie into this whole idea of not just the evolution of the solar system, but then the idea of the possibilities of life, because they're talking about finding water you know, underneath the gas, the gaseous atmosphere of Jupiter. But, um, yeah, so if anyone, it's just really interesting to think about, you know, why, why are they faking auroras, not just on Jupiter, but even, you know, Saturn and Venus supposedly have their own auroras, which, um, you know, makes me wonder about it. So the idea of a dawn, you know, a new dawn for these different deities or different realms and you know like a it does it signify something you know when they whenever they, they supposedly come out with a new revelation like this is there some sort of esoteric meaning behind it or also too with the auroras it's interesting because it kind of makes you it, it kind of seems to suggest the idea of of a crowning or a coronation or something and maybe that's just me i don't know but yeah, I've just been chewing on this um, for a few days, and I just, you know, I don't have anything majorly, uh, you know, groundbreaking to reveal, but just kind of wanted to talk about it a little bit and get people's input and see what see what other people have found on it as well.